in Denmark, not only is university education completely free, like real free, but you also as a student get even paid to study. This is incredible when comparing to the rest of the world, while in places like the US or the UK, you get into debt to study and graduate like well underwater. In Denmark, you end up your university education with a healthy and strong bank account. And of course, depending on how much you party during your studies, but like that's a different story. In this video, I'll tell you exactly what is this student grant, how much money you can get and how you can apply and then get this grant. What is the student grant? It's called ESU in Danish, so it translates as Statens Udelsestote, so the support of the students or the support of the education of the students by the state. And it's a state educational grant that is given to every single full-time student here in Denmark that fulfills standard conditions. In 2022, this ESU money is 6,397 krona per month and that's before taxes. So that's roughly 860 euros per month that you get as a student. Depending on what is your tax bracket, because again, a lot of the people that will get this will have a little part-time job or something, depends again on that, you'll get in hand, so after taxes, between 3,600 and 5,600 krona. And this is again good money if you're a student. The concept of this too is that by receiving this financial aid, students can focus more on their studies and rather than on just, you know, making money and so on. So they can actually encourage people to study. This is also a relief for the parents in a sense that they don't need to spend a lot of their own money from their own pockets to support their children, which is like, if you're a parent, it's perfect. To get a SU, if you're a Danish citizen, you're literally just good to go. There are almost no hassles. As long as you're enrolled in a university education, you can get a SU. If you're a European Union citizen, so if you're of the EU or EEA actually, it's a slightly more complicated, but you can still get this student grant, which is pretty crazy. That is that you need to be working in Denmark at least 10 to 12 hours a week, and the, need, the work needs to be on a Danish contract. So meaning that you need to be paying taxes on this work in Denmark. So you can't be freelancing for a company in Germany or Italy unless they make a Danish contract for you. That's one option. Or the other option is that if you have been living in Denmark, or so meaning you have lived in Denmark for over five years, that means you can get this SU without the minimum working hours requirement. If you are not from the EU, you can still get SU, but it's a lot more complicated. Again, you will need to have lived in Denmark for over five years or have been working here for over 30 hours a week for more than two years. In my humble opinion, the fact that non-Danes can actually get this SU is absolutely crazy. Look, up to 2013, SU was only available to Danish students or students that had, again, been continuously working in Denmark for a minimum of two years. Now it's a lot of people that are actually getting it. It's not that the Danish government decided to be generous here. They were actually obliged by the EU Court of Justice that said that the SU should be for everyone, again, in this type of shape or form and not just for Danes. This ruling has been costing now the Danish state so much money that there has been like broad consensus among all parties actually almost that they're going to be scrapping a lot of the English programs in universities again to lower the number of the foreign students that they are in Denmark and thus the cost of the SU. How do you apply for the SU? So first you need to apply in the website called su.dk and to go through the application you'll need three things. One is your name or meet ID, your CPR and then your work contract. When you go to the su.dk website you click where it says log Po mean SU button, and then you enter your name ID and meet ID details, and then you're off to go to finish out the process, which actually is quite simple. First, you need to fill out the it's called equal status document, which is both available in Danish and in English. And once you fill up this document, you need to upload your work contract. Again, like the work contract check, they just want to confirm that you're working at least these 10 to 12 hours a week. If not, they will not you know give you the SU. So it's critical. Either your work contract, it states this number of hours that you're working, so it's clear in the contract that you're working this amount of hours, or otherwise you need to provide, let's say, the last three payslips that you have to the SU office so they can check themselves and make the calculations of, okay, how much you're earning and is that reflecting in the amount of hours that you should have in order to get a SU. Once you're approved for a SU, you, all you need to do is to, again, make sure that you keep working these 10 to 12 hours a week. Again, the SU office will check if you as an international student are still working in the way you're supposed to or not. And if not, you know, might get into trouble. To the point that if you stop fulfilling the requirements, you'll have to pay back to the Danish state the entire amount of SU that you got during this, again, offending period. You submit your case and then it's gone for processing. And it's just that simple. The SU office comes back, back to you in normally between one and three months. And if you're lucky, you sometimes hear from them earlier. Again, in most cases, if you start 
of your application or you submit your application just when a lot of students do the same. So that could be, for example, in August or September when a lot of new people are coming in, then you'll have to wait longer. But overall, that's the type of timing we're talking about here. Just a few more notes on the SUE is that if you have your own business, you can apply for a SUE as well, but it needs to be a legit business. So you can be self-employed and get a SUE as well. You just need to make sure that your business has CBR. This is documented by an accountant, that your business is profitable, that you have invoices from your customers, like showing that you actually get revenue from the business. So it just can't be like a shell company doing nothing. You actually need to be legit about it. It's a more complicated process. I have not applied as a business, so I can't say how, how exactly it's going, but it's definitely possible. Then a note that is also important is that despite I told you that the moment you stop working the way you're supposed to, you will get into trouble and potentially lose your SU, it is possible to maintain your status as an EU worker, even if you become involuntarily unemployed. In a case like this, you need to fulfill certain conditions. To start, you need to have been working these 10 to 12 hours a week for at least 10 weeks before you become unemployed. And then you need to follow through with these job centers and so on, show that you're actually looking for a job. And that's pretty much it. If you actually get a SU, person I can tell you myself, it's a big deal financially. I only got it at the very tail end of my studies because the rules only kicked in then that you could do as a foreigner. I'm really jealous of the people that can actually go and get it now because again, it would help your finances so much. To hear more about studying in Denmark, check this video out where I go through my own experience as a master student in the Copenhagen Business School. Thanks for watching and talk to you again next week.